What's up, what's up, you guys? It is um, a week before Thanksgiving, and I want to put some information out for you guys, especially going into the holiday season, that you may find useful, especially if you struggle with your holiday eating habits, lifestyle habits in general. Um, a lot of times people think that uh, when I talk to people, you know, and they ask me, like, what I eat, the first thing they're going to say is, what do you eat? Uh, carrots and broccoli and chicken. And, um, you know, because I'm, I'm a trainer and I look like a trainer. I look like I'm in shape. So everybody thinks I'm Superman because I kind of look like Superman. <laughs> I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. But uh, people think that. I don't eat anything but carrots and kale and stuff all day. But if you know me, or if you've been around me when I'm eating, you know that couldn't be farther from the truth. I eat everything. I eat chitlins, I eat lasagna, I eat chicken wings, steak, beef ribs, uh, peach cobbler, pumpkin, not pumpkin pie, I eat sweet potato pie, I eat cakes, shakes, anything baked, cookies, anything, I eat everything. I see food, I eat it. So, people think that because, uh, especially trainers, that, and people, and some people try to put on, like, that's all they eat all the time. I've never eaten uh, fast food in my life. And, uh, you know, I don't, I only eat chicken, 17 chicken breasts a day. And, you know, I never eat any sugar or anything. Why is that kind of, kind of do? You know what I'm saying? I eat all the food. However, there's a way, there's a method to the madness to keep it from becoming a bad lifestyle or to keep it from just piling up into poor health. You know what I'm saying? So you have to have a game plan when it comes to eating. What you're eating and what's going into your body has got to be important all the time even when you're binge eating <clears throat> you have got to have a plan for after the binge eating and even leading up to the binge eating if you're gonna if you're gonna have a cheat meal or whatever it is you have to have a plan that entire time like if you the, the more what you eat is out of mind the more damage you're gonna be doing it's kind of like people think that they're getting old and most of what you feel in terms of your body getting older, it's just poor lifestyle habits. You know how people take an old car and they sit out in the woods and then the rust and decays and turns all, all, you know, gets all kind of holes in it, it's all dirty and nasty. That's because you left it out in the woods to rot. It's the same thing with your body. If you just let it rot, that's exactly what it's gonna do. So if you're not exercising, your body's, your bones are gonna be weak muscles and tendons are going to be weak and you're going to deteriorate quickly. Likewise, all it takes is like one bad tank of gas to have your engine sputtering all over the place or to even destroy your engine in your car. One bad tank of gas or some wrong fluid in the wrong place can destroy your car immediately. Yet we continuously put the wrong type of substances in our body over and over and over again. And our bodies are amazing. They continue to find a way to survive and to perform and to work and to function in spite of all the crap we put in it on a daily basis. Some of us put in it on a daily basis. So people are this mindset that, hey, I'm I'm trying to get in shape. I'm trying to get healthier. That means I'm just going to eat carrots and, and spinach and lettuce all day for the rest of my life. It's not that at all. But like I said, there is a method to the madness if you want your body to perform at a high level for a long period of time. All right. So case in point, um, last uh, weekend, I went to uh, the Formula One. Uh, race in Austin, Texas. Went with a couple of friends of mine, race car buddies, uh, my wife, and a couple and their uh, significant others. And so we were 
were down there for four days. So Thursday, uh, Wednesday night before we left, or Wednesday morning, I woke up on Wednesday morning, I was 228 pounds. Mind you, I'm near the end of a six week challenge with a lot of my clients that we do, where we focus on getting our, our mind and our bodies uh, in a quick peak right before the holiday season so that we don't lose our edge and so that we age slower. So we try to peak twice a year, once in the spring, uh, going into summer, and then once in the fall. So I'm near the end of that challenge, and I've been basically doing that leading up to my 40th birthday all summer. You know, pretty uh, strict with my eating habits and lifestyle habits because I wanted to go into 40 feeling and looking good. So I decided, you know, when I go to Austin, I'm going to enjoy myself. And enjoy myself, I did. So, like, you know, we got down there and I said, you know, I'm going to fast. I'm going to stick to something. So my, my eating habits were still top of my mind, but I'm going to enjoy myself. So I would like skip breakfast. I would eat maybe twice a day, two, two meals a day and a snack at most, maybe. But when I was eating, I ate everything. Like we went to this uh, hamburger joint, had these big old hamburgers, they had a big old thing of fries, it was huge. Um, and they had a shake, usually you go get a large shake, right? And it's like, you go to some places like maybe 12 ounces, maybe 16 ounces. This thing was like 32 ounce shake. You know, I had to eat all of it. I ate all of it. And then we went to this barbecue restaurant. Texas, you in Texas, man, you gotta have some barbecue, right? To this barbecue, right? This barbecue, they had this beef rib, man. It looked like Fred Flintstone, you know, they eat dinosaur bones, looked like a dinosaur bone. It had to be like eight, nine pounds. I thought it was huge, and I couldn't let it beat me. Like, I ain't come all the way down here for you to give me no one beef rib, ain't no one beef rib gonna beat me. So, I, to eat the, I had to eat the whole thing. And mind you, my homeboys, uh, about to say, all both of them are over 200 pounds. Neither one of them could finish it. I killed that thing. I killed the whole thing. And I had some baked beans. I had some potato salad. Some cold slop. I had like three. And I, you know, I don't drink a lot of soda. I don't drink any sugary drinks like usually during the week. But they had these different color sodas. And I love bright color sodas. So, I, so they had like red. They had orange. They had blue. And they had a clear one. So I had a red, an orange, and a blue one. Because I was just going to taste all the sodas. So I had that. We went to the steakhouse. And this is just a few of the things we ate while we were down there. I had some ice cream sandwiches that I took back to the house. We rented a house. Uh, had some of those. I was eating late. We had some chicken wings. And every place we went, we ordered all the appetizers. I ate most of all of those. And then we went to this uh, this nice steakhouse. And uh, we got these $50 steaks. My wife didn't eat all her steak. So... We went the last night, Sunday night, we went to the steakhouse, got these steaks. So I ate, I ate most of the appetizers and my steak and whatever else I had, potatoes and Caesar salad. That's usually what I get when I get a steak. My wife only ate half her steak. Well, I wasn't about to let no $50 steak go to waste. Well, now it's a $25 steak because she ate half of it. Well, I wasn't about to let no $25 worth of steak go to waste. So early Monday morning, I was up at eight o'clock before we left to go to the airport eating steak make sure that thing go to waste so anyways i got back i left i was 228 the night before we left got back um monday night i was 242 <laughs> two, four, 242 pounds uh monday uh monday night when we got back so you can do the math just do the math about how much weight i gained while we was going And so, um, and I worked out while we were down there. So we went to the gym. I got a temporary membership at LA Fitness. So remember, I got kicked out of the gym a long time ago. I haven't been back to LA Fitness since then, but I got a week membership at uh, LA Fitness. I guess they erased that from the records after like six months or whatever, but it's been a couple years since I've been there. And then the one that was uh, maybe Friday morning and then Saturday morning or Sunday morning, I don't remember the days. Uh, I went for a run, like a three mile run, and I could tell I was heavy. When I got on the scale down there, it said like 240 something. I was like, man, that scale broke. I ain't just paying no attention to that. But anyways, when I got home, it basically confirmed that I was over 240. So anyways, 
And I got back and I said, you got to the end of the week to get this weight off. And so even while I was down there, while I was binge eating, you know, I had a plan to minimize the damage. Enjoy myself, but minimize the damage. Um, but then once I got back, I had to have a plan to get myself back. And this is the reason why I don't get fat. This is the reason why I don't retain weight for long periods of time. Sorry about that, Like, I got back, I got on my fasting, I drank my water uh, with my BCAAs in it, which I'm about to drink right now. One gallon every day in the mornings. I cleaned up my eating, ate my eggs, and I actually took out some of what I ate in the morning. Because when you go down, you go out of town, or you go traveling, you overeat so for several days. What you need to do when you come back is under eat. You can under eat for several days in a row if you've been overeating for several days. So I cut my calories back, even though I was still eating, you know, four eggs mixed with egg whites in the morning with 100 grams, 100 to 150 grams of egg whites every morning. Two Power Crunch bars, and usually I eat like three to four slices of toast. I cut the toast out because I'd already had too many carbs over the weekend, and. Um, I made some uh, basmati rice with fish in it, ate a lighter meat uh, that was easier to digest because my goal was to get my digestive system back on track, flush my system out, get my digestive system back on track because that's the key to not getting fat is a lot of people go out and they eat that stuff and then they get discouraged and then they just continue to eat bad because you're like, oh, well, I did all this damage. I might as well just, I don't know how to, un I don't know how to undo it. So I'm just going to give up, you know, and throw in the towel. And frankly, that's a defeatist mindset. You got to get back on the wagon and undo what you did as quickly as possible. So went through eating throughout the week, did not eat out at all. Um, now I did enjoy a couple Klondike bars uh, through the week, uh, but that was pretty much it. And by the end of last week, I was at 227. So a net loss of a pound from the prior week. And you gotta realize that most of the weight that you're gonna gain on vacation is constipation, water weight, extra sodium. You know, you hold holding weight, water in your skin, your intestines, and your internal organs. You're just holding water everywhere. So you gotta get that water out. You gotta get the constipation out of your system. So you're eating cheese like every day, all the meals, queso and all kinds of stuff. You know what I'm saying? All that milk, I'm lactose intolerant. So you gotta get your digestive system back on track and it's really as simple as that you gotta undo what you did so that you can move on and keep it from building up instead of just being like oh well you know and just continuing to uh, practice those bad habits those bad lifestyle habits you gotta get back on the wagon as quick as possible and coincidentally enough one of my clients who's in early stages of training with me uh, has been doing fantastic in terms of losing weight, which was their goal. Went out of town, same thing. Went out of town, gained only a couple of pounds. Uh, <clears throat> came back, got on their uh, water program, eating right program, cutting back on carbs, and by the end of the week, had a net loss of two pounds. So it can be done, but you gotta wanna do it, and it's gotta be important. And you cannot keep falling back on the excuses of, you know, oh, well, I stress eat. Everybody's stressed, man. But your health has got to be important, more important than whatever your feelings are at the time. You feel bad, you're stressed. Stuff is hard. Life is tough. Get over it. Get yourself back on the wagon. Don't just eat yourself to death every time you get stressed out about something. That is an excuse. And not one for you to use over and over again completely exploit it in order to do damage to your body. Okay, you're stressed out one day. Okay, go have a bad meal. But that doesn't mean you just continue to just eat bad over and over again and buy all the snacks and just go off the hinges. That's not going to fix anything. It's only going to make you feel worse. So now you're going to be more stressed and then you're going to cause more stress is going to cause you to, more, to do more stress eating. It's just reciprocal self-inflicted damage on your body and it's, it's, it's a, a fallback excuse that people use as a defense mechanism for accountability somebody says okay it's time for you to be accountable 
and you say, oh, well, I stress eat. And then you go on some some stupid article that you read that says, oh, well, you know, things call you just stress eat. That's a, that's a modern day excuse that people are using to practice bad habits, okay? I could get it if you eat bad for a day or something. But a week, two weeks, you're just gonna keep on doing it? No, that's not sufficient. That is not acceptable. That's why you have accountability partners. That's why you have trainers, to keep people to keep you on track. Stop using it as an excuse to destroy yourself, to eat yourself to death, because it's not sufficient. Somebody gotta keep it and tell it like it is. Stop calling everybody. I'm not gonna call you. I'm gonna tell you like it is. All right, so anyways, that's our episode for today. All right, it's the holiday season. There's gonna be holiday parties and if eating with family. It's gonna be late nights. You gotta also eliminate that. When you get back from traveling, you gotta eliminate those late night eatings. Eat early. Get done eating as early as possible. Close that eating window. Eat your food within a window. Four hours, six hours, eight hours. You know what I'm saying? Condense that eating. Don't just eat all day. Have a plan as far as what you're going to eat for the day. All right? It's as simple as trying. It's when you don't try is that you're doing damage. All right? That's all it takes, y'all. And I'll try to give you the information that you need to be successful and to be healthy. But I can't put in effort for you. I can give you the information, but you're going to have to put in the effort for yourself. All right, guys. Hope this information is helpful. Stay tuned to the channel. We're going to keep pumping out all the tools that you'll need to get and stay in shape. All right, guys. I'll let y'all in the next video. Peace out.